Welcome to the Music Mission. My name is Panayoti Karmas. I am a music teacher in Sydney, Australia, as well as the conductor and director of the Modest Orchestra, an orchestra consisting of passionate professional musicians that prioritizes the education and enjoyment of music through the performance of staple works and new compositions. All recordings you hear, including this background music, come from our public performances, which you can find on YouTube if you search up Modest Orchestra. This podcast is designed for all lovers of music, no matter your musical preference, experience, or expertise. Now on to today's episode. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. On th- today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, digital learning and remote learning, uh, specifically in the classroom. And I've got my colleague here, Amber Johnson, who I've known since 2015. Uh, say hi, Amber. Hi. Um, so we've known each other for almost, well, basically half a decade. So, um, I think the best way f- to be introduced on a show is to introduce yourself rather than me introduce. So could you tell us something about yourself, Amber? Um, yeah, sure. I, uh, I'm a 25 year old teacher. I've been teaching since my third year now. I did my degree at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music. Um, I went in as a singer and music education um, student and I got to specialise through my honours into adolescent pedagogy, adolescent vocal pedagogy. Um, So yeah, I'm a singer, I'm a chorister, um, I do a lot of directing of choirs um, and I currently work um, in an inner west high school. So uh, yeah, I just spend a lot of time singing and teaching. Um, Yeah, that's what I love to do. Yeah. And um and conducting, and, uh, conducting, and that's actually yeah. where we met. Yes, in conducting class with uh, George the Ellis. <laughs> yeah, no, there was were more the, vocalists, weren't there? I don't think there were any more vocalists. I think it was just me. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. I think it started off with a few vocalists, but then they dropped off. Oh yeah, they dropped out pretty quickly when they realised that you know it wasn't going to be just choral stuff. In fact, it was hardly any choral stuff. N- <laughs> no, it was it, yeah, and it was quite hard. People thought it'd be a walk in the park, but turns out conducting isn't. Yeah, it was so. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> so, um, where today's the sixth of April. Let me just check that. Yes, it is. Um, and so I'm at my school. I'm into this. I've just finished my second week of remote learning, and we have a staff development week this week. So I've had quite a bit of. Um, you know, hands-on experience with remote teaching. And Amber, could you talk about your experience with just remote teaching, how much you've had to do? You're in the public sector and I'm in the private sector. So Mm. I think it'd be cool to um, just compare the two. Yeah, definitely. Um, In the department schools, they were really reluctant to move to online teaching um, and it took a while and it's still not, schools are still not completely closed um, yet. Right. So teachers are there so do you still on have minimal students supervision. Okay. Yeah, so we have occasional right. students. I think it's a very, very small percentage um, and we have minimal supervision. Um, a faculty or two at a time, a couple teachers from that faculty will go in um, one day a week at the moment. Um, the one day a week has been put on my day off because I'm 0.8, uh, so I don't work on that day. Uh, so that's... Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose means that I'm fully from home. Um, I do live quite close to school and I have gone in a couple times to the office um, and we'll probably right. go back and get some more gear that I need um, that I've realised that I need to teach from home. Um, I guess the most challenging thing for me at the moment is as a young person, obviously I don't have um, a whole house. I don't have a home office or a second bedroom. Um, I just have the bedroom that I rent in my share house and I'm kind of moving around yep. my um, flatmates who are also working from home. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, they're telling you not to conduct classes from your bedroom and it's like, well, that's the only space I have. So just getting creative with the Zoom backgrounds uh, so that the kids don't see my bedroom um, and spending a lot of oh, time so you're allowed to use the Zoom background. on the floor. Uh, yes, we haven't been told otherwise. Um, so hopefully they won't tell us not to, because I really don't have a space otherwise. Um, yeah. yeah. 
I spent a lot of time sitting on the floor and then sitting on my bed and just uh, trying not to have terrible posture and um, trying to keep moving so that I'm just not used to sitting down all the time. Are you used to sitting down? No, I thought oh I God. thought I'd be fine because, you know, in, in my youth, I used to play video games for hours on end and read for hours on end. Um, and in the summer holiday, I thought I was quite lazy. But this is the first time I'm really just sitting down without moving. Yeah, like five, it, it's, six, it's, seven hours a day sitting down, looking at your yeah, computer. Yeah, I think the first week, um, I just kind of treated it like normal work which was the commute to from my from my bed to the desk uh was you know five (laughs) seconds obviously get ready but there wasn't that commute that you know get up move around get on the train you know during university you know if those hard weeks we had um uh in the library you know you would go to the uni you'd sit in your library you're sitting there for like four or five hours you'd get up you'd go for a walk and then you'd come back sit down and then come back so there was that you know physical activity but here there's nothing yeah yeah well I'm having to make physical activity I'm trying to go on a few walks um every day and I'm also doing yoga in my bedroom I am lucky enough to have quite a large space in my room um so Mm -hmm. yeah working out in my bedroom is something I can do um still thank goodness Um, And I have a few parks and stuff around near where I live. So it's nice to be able to get out and see people walking their dogs and stuff like that. Yeah. I've, I've taken up walking, just, just walking as a, as a sport. I, I've actually always been against walking funnily enough as a runner um, and so as a gym junkie. So it's, I just needed some some sort of physical activity that wasn't high intensity because I just needed to yeah. move around because I haven't got the energy all the time to physically exert myself to the point of, you know. Yeah, definitely. To just being really tired. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. And I've noticed ever since I started walking, you know, I wake up within the first half hour, I'm at the door just walking. Um, it really does clear your head so much. It's ridiculous. That's good. I'm I'm still struggling to get up in the morning. That is a long, a long lifelong struggle for me. Uh, so, whoops, the Amber, you, are not you the cut best out completely me, there. Can you say I, that again? I, I go at recess. Oh, um, I, Amber, you, I said that yeah. I'm still struggling, still struggling with the um the morning. Uh, I've always been that person that'll get up as late as possible. Um, so yeah, my morning walk happens at recess time. Um, I let uh, okay. myself go to recess. Uh, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm used to the 5 30 start six o'clock start get to band i usually get to band an hour early half an hour at the worst because i just like the ability just to like to get ready yeah, my, i get that yeah to, yeah so now i've just used that time now to just like okay i've never been a morning exercise person there's no time like the present so fair fair good on you good on you i just thank you i don't think it's going to happen for me but that's all right it's fine i think i think i <laughs> I'll, I'll slowly um encourage you and persuade you and all right. ring me in the morning you'll be doing it I'll with see me if i can leave my phone not on silent <laughs> 5 30 a.m okay podcast our exercise. <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, man. So let's um, go into just, I don't know, the sheer logistics of teaching online. What was your, what was, what did you go in expecting to work, expecting not to work? And uh, what didn't do either of those two? <laughs> like what, what just yeah, completely well, subverted your expectations? I guess um, I already had Google Classroom set up for all of my classes and all of my ensembles, um, mm-hmm. and that's that's nothing new. The idea of learning tracks for my ensembles um, is is something that that's not new for me. Um, I've mm-hmm. always done a lot of work on Google Classroom with my students, less so with my juniors. Um, we try to keep off technology a little bit in the first term. Um, so it was quite a quick change for them to have to go from really not having to bring their computer to school to sitting at home and being on it all the time. Um, I suppose I, I was excited. I had lots of, um, lots of ideas. I have lots of, um, resources ready to go. Um, and so do a lot of my colleagues and a lot of my friends, uh, through uni, there's a lot of sharing of ideas and this app and that app and, spending a lot of time um, kind of 
talking through different ways of teaching different uh, browser-based programs or apps or all that sort mm. of stuff with my older colleagues as well and helping them out with that. Um, so I yes. think that's not been too much of an issue, um, you know, grabbing kind of screen recorded um, videos of my computer so that I can show the kids what to do, all of that. Really comfortable with that. Um, the thing I was not prepared for is uh, the level of administration, though it has um, eased off slightly this this week, but I was getting hundreds, and I'm, I'm not kidding, hundreds of emails a day um, with mm-hmm. students just not reading instructions, getting overwhelmed, not knowing how to edit a PDF, yes. not knowing how to flip a page on a PDF thing, just really yes. little things that I didn't realize mm-hmm. students were going to need support with. And, and it, it frustrated me um, for a bit mm-hmm. until I kind of took a step back and thought, I think actually this is more of a anxiety and a, um, a marker of them being overwhelmed rather than it right. is them um, being lazy. I think they're just um, getting very stressed. There's a lot of work going up mm. um, and, and they, it's probably no more than they do at school, but they, they feel very, I think a lot of the students feel very overwhelmed by it. And so instead of kind of problem solving, yeah, instead of that kind of, uh, instead of the confidence that they get from knowing they could ask me, because they wouldn't ask the same questions in class, they would just figure it out. But because I'm there, maybe they they feel more comfortable trying it out. But at home, they panic and they they put a post on the Google Classroom and and ask you know all these things that they could Google or they could ask a friend um, over Messenger or or stuff that they could just sit and think about for five minutes and and they'd come up with the answer. So training kids to think through the critical load, the um, cognitive load of, of Mm -hmm. panic and overwhelm and and moving through to critical thinking and critical reflection is something that um, hopefully all teachers are encouraging their students to do. Um, And it's a big learning curve for them, a really big learning curve for the students. Yes, I agree so much. I've, I've also been encountering the same issues exactly what you articulated it perfectly all the issues I've been having um and how the students have been feeling they like they're there by themselves and it's quite a scary time so I think what we need to be able to try and just teach them as best as we can um and just help foster is this critical thinking and this just um thinking outside of the box and creative ways of solving problems because yeah, and definitely trying to create um, connection for them if, with me um, yes. and with each other, like really going out of your way to try and do group work um, or online is is really helpful for them at this stage, and I think will be will be more helpful next term. And we'll really need to dig into ways of creating collaboration online um, because they need it. They really need it. Yes, they they um a lot of subjects I guess other than music it's I not to point any fingers but uh it's quite easy for the girls to just you know be given a task do it by yourself mm-hmm. and just work alone whereas music is really that one subject where they can really work together and it can almost be the subject where it, it, it's it's a break from the mundane almost i think it's just that there's the creativity oh, yeah. spark there's the collaborate collaboration um we've introduced i'm very proud actually in the faculty um everyone is now using soundtrap um good good and and now that all it's schools basic- can access premium for free um with five i think it's uh a hundred or even maybe more. 120 kids. days, 120 um, days. And that's a certain amount of seats, right? Isn't it like 500 seats? 500 seats. Or something? So We've used amazing. up 78. We're tiny. We've only got like a hundred people per stu- per year. And so we're, we're going to not even use up half. So we're fine. Um, that's but yeah, that's really amazing. They've done that. Um, they really love these things called breakout rooms in, do you use Zoom or Google Hangouts? We use Google Zoom. Hangouts, you said. Use Google services. Oh, you use Zoom? No, we use Zoom. We use Zoom. Yep. So we use Google Classrooms oh, and okay. all Could... the kind of Google stuff that goes with that, but we're using Zoom at the moment. Okay. Yes. Zoom is quite good. Um, mm-hmm. Have you used the breakout feature? I haven't. No. I've used the waiting room. Is it like that, but in reverse? 
Uh, okay, yeah, I guess it's kind of like that. Okay, so uh, you are the host, and it's essentially group work. So you can say, all right, everybody, I'm going to split you off into three groups of five. So you hit breakout rooms, and then you've got two options. One is to – so it says how many rooms you want to make. It was like, well, I want to make three groups of five, so three groups. And then it will automatically say, oh, four to five students per group. It will tell you the maths. Wow. You can either hit hit automatically assign. So it is probably the most automatic random – assignment of groups you could ever have because it's, it's just off a random algorithm so you can say all right allocate or you can manually um just click kids in so you know if you've got mm. two kids that you know can't work together in a group you can just say all right everyone i'm putting you into three groups and then so they go off into these groups and they're kind of like sub channels of the main chat so you've got the main view and then as the teacher you say i'm gonna go into group one bang and you go in the kids are there working hi 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 how are you and they're awesome. self-contained. So you can and they can supervise it. Yes. And so I float from group to group and they oh. love that feature so much because they, they, they get to talk. I didn't realize you um, could do that at all. That is it, so it is, I will be presenting if we're that about, at staff meeting tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very Jeff good. Well, you can tell your friend, Panny Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. Caramano. In terms of student, well, <laughs> Mr. K, excuse me. Um, that that's the that's the cool name for me. Um, <laughs> in terms of students' well being, it's the best thing because, sure, you know you're gonna leave them and they'll be by themselves and they'll probably get a little bit off track. They'll go oh, da, da 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 da, but they're working and they're talking and they're collaborating and there's the banter mm. which you really do need, um, because I think what they're finding is that they're going from class to class and it's just full on straight away no break. And there's no, yeah. like, how's your day? Like, the, this banter of, like, haha, you know, there's no yeah, social element doing, about it anymore. We've been doing general check-ins with Zoom. So even if we've got stuff that we don't really need to be on Zoom for, I've been just sitting there on Zoom and kind of getting on with answering emails and stuff while they're doing their own stuff. Um, and I have occasional students that will sit on Zoom the whole time and do their work, but they just like the idea of having me there um and then there are students that flit in and out just pop on hey miss how do i do this and then go off yes again. um and that's I've done, been really helpful so so yeah, yeah i've that done that with my year tens we well. had a double last week yeah we had a double last yeah, week with my year tens and it was a composition be, lesson it must be long how how long do you have to are you it do they long. stick to their timetable are they supposed to be sticking to their timetable well, so we've just stuck to our timetable because it's the easiest thing. Uh, what we've That's said really is, yes, yeah, so we've stuck to the timetable. Uh, and what we've said is, I guess initially they said one in every four lessons. So a double counts as two, um, hence the name double, uh, has to be a Zoom. The other three can just be assigned work. Okay. And what they found was that the students actually preferred the Zoom. So now it's only one in every two. Um which is good. It gives you a bit of a break, but I kind of just, the first day I was just completely overwhelmed by everything and I really needed that. No, I'm just assigning work. But after yeah. that, when I got into, I was totally completely, if I'm being honest, I was completely overwhelmed the first two days. Um, but after that, I actually did enjoy the, all right, everyone, we're having a Zoom lesson and it's really fun. It's really interactive. Um, and there were a lot of lessons of, okay, you're going to work on, your, on the work I'm giving you. I'm just going to sit here pop in and out with questions and they love that and I love it too yeah that's really good that's really good yeah I suppose for me the um the thing that doesn't quite make sense because I know that there are teachers at my school that um are kind of doing especially with their senior classes are almost doing kind of lecture zoom situations and I mean you can do that in you know um higher level maths and stuff um mm -hmm. but I would say I'm very lucky that a normal lesson in my school is maybe 10 to 20 minutes with them all sitting in front of me talking through what we're going to do. And then a lot of the time we're doing group work, practical work. They're working in practice rooms and I'm running around like a headless chicken sorting them all out. And that's my day, that <laughs> day to day almost all the time. Yeah. And so to have lost that as a, as a teaching method um I'm, oh, I'm just doing so much more yeah worksheet building and it's, video tutorial building and um 
yeah, I'm hoping that next term we'll be able to be a bit more flexible with our with what we're teaching. We just kind of had to stick to our guns this term and be like, no, we're doing instruments with orchestra. It's like, well, yeah, that's I, boring. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? so we're doing. So, I don't know. Hopefully, we can do more kind of tech based things and really kind of make the online work work online situation work for us and be an advantage like be like okay well we have to do a term's worth of work because i mean let's not be silly i don't think we're going back to work anytime soon um yeah you know i think we should be really making it work for us and taking the opportunity to teach music tech skills yeah we had our faculty today and uh we discussed that um well Nessa made the official announcement saying that year 11 and 12 assessments can basically be completely rejigged, um, mm. dependent on your situation. So we said, based on the fact that year 11 and 12 are being completely rejigged, let's not be too obsessed about exactly what our assignments are and yeah. let our assessments, let's tweak them a bit. And at the same time, don't well, let's not pressure ourselves to expect the same outcomes as what we normally have because yeah, it's just not going to be possible. Cause as you said, it's really easy for, I found myself doing it actually with one of my year seven, with my first year eight class. And it was like in the second day and I went into lecture mode. Um, and, and then like halfway through the class, like none of them got it. And I realized, Oh dear me, this is, this is I, how am I, why am I teaching like this? So, um, it's really yeah. tricky because yeah, um, it's, you, it's hard natural. to gauge. It's not what you would actually teach them. Like. No. Um, but I guess one thing to try and bridge that gap um, is I'm fortunate to have had this iPad Pro since 2016, actually. So you've probably seen me carrying it with me everywhere. And it has this Apple Pencil, which is a very nifty feature. Oh, um, yes. I want one. And you pl- uh, I think now is a good time to really invest in one. Um, they range from anywhere the ones that have actually, no, they all have Apple support now, every single iPad, which is great. Um, they, they range from $470 with the education discount all the way up to 1800. So take your pick. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. I should look into them. Uh, considering that I've moved everything else to Apple in the last, you know, year or so. So, yeah, well, it's a very, zoom is very good at doing this. It's, it's seamless. Um, you just plug your lightning cable into your laptop or you can airplay and then you just say select iPad and everything you do on your iPad comes through their screen like a monitor. And so with the Apple pencil, it's oh, like wow. writing on paper. Um, I can write notes yeah. and it's like, not only that though, um, I use this app called good notes, good notes five. Um, it's quite good at taking notes. Uh, and it has like a structuring system similar to Google drive. And yeah. the cool thing about it is that you can import any PDF, you can take photos of any PDF, and then you can annotate on it. And it's got inbuilt oh, manuscript. What a dream. So I, I'm i doing like, you know, showing them how a scale works. It's like, all right, this, all right, year eight, we're going to learn what a chord progression is. Here's one, four, five. Do we all know, um, do we all know um, that's what makes you beautiful? Bum, ba bum, ba ba. you know, one, four, five. I just played on the piano. Then I showed them the chords and we're like, oh, this makes sense. That's really cool. Yeah, look, I might, um, I might um look into the into the iPad life, might sort that out for myself. Yes. But, and um, oh man, Apple screen, refurbished screen ones. time though. Screen time is is stressing me out. Is the amount of time yes. you're spending on a screen stressing you out? Let's um, it is. Let's have a chat um, about screen time and mental health and how like I spent so much time telling my year sevens to make sure that they're getting time outside and that they're exercising regularly. And I don't know, even, you know, in the classroom, normally I see them walk in and they've gone to the local supermarket and bought lollies and stuff and they're eating it at nine, 10 in the morning. And I'm going, guys, look after your body, look after your mental health, be healthy. And now we're all sitting in front of our computers for hours at a time. Yeah. Um, it is a very tricky one. Um, well, there's, there's no choice, but to be in front of the computer, which is, uh, what we've done actually, we have booklets, um, in our department, which is quite good, uh, designed by our head of music, which is very nice. And, um, so the, 
so all the girls have have got a composition booklet for the composition task for year eight and then like they're doing um, classical music so they have a booklet which is like all the worksheets and all the stuff that we do all the activities everything's in there it's really really handy dandy and there's a composition booklet so they can work out of those two um so really the only thing they're doing when it comes to screen is looking at me and writing on in their booklets Oh. Um, so we're, we're really, I'm, <laughs> you'd be surprised me, the tech master, uh, I am anti-technology in the classroom. I am so, I love the act of writing. I, I hate taking okay. notes on laptops because you remember sitting next to me in, in uni. I'm not going to say what I used to do, but I wasn't <laughs> always on task. So, and I, and I'm an adult and I was That's in university. Fair. So fair. what chance to set you kids in year seven and eight so i say laptop free zone i mean i will say first lesson my room sorry sorry i think you cut out a little bit have i lost you hello oh did i cut out okay i am here so i was i was just gonna say um what was I going to say? I was going to say that, yeah, I mean, the staying on task while on technology is a struggle that I think everyone is trying to cope with. I mean, I have done, uh, I've won quite a few games of Words with Friends uh, during <laughs> school hours uh, this week. So, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you've got to be careful that you're, you're avoiding distraction and it's hard when you're in your own house. Um, and I'm also seeing that um, senior students, uh, are kind of logging on and saying, "Oh, sorry, Miss, that I missed the Zoom lesson. Um, uh, I was working." I lost you. I'm like, "What?" There is. I, I, I um, lost sorry, you just I'm then. You students. said senior students. I'm that You're students, noticing senior students. Uh, yeah, senior students are doing are taking extra shifts at work, presumably because people that have children are staying at home. Um, right. And so I have students that you know work in the supermarkets or work. Um, in fast food and are are actually taking shifts during the day, um, which right wow I feel very conflicted about because I'm like, well, someone has to keep the economy going and they should be yes. able to earn some money. Um, and What's you never know, there situation? might even be yeah, there might be family situations there. But also, why are companies offering school age students? Um, shifts during school time like yeah it's it that's that's a conundrum that i'm not sure what to do with um and it's kind of a case-by-case situation uh because our school uh is not being entirely clear on whether or not the expectation is that you need to be in school doing school in school hours or if you can do work outside of school hours and um that's something that i don't think everybody in the school is is unified on at this point right Um, and is that because uh you're a public school and there's no real clear direction for public schools is is that what it is or is that just purely a principle I think I think it's like a bit about exec and I think it's a bit about kind of how the different faculties work as well like right um, I do understand that there are faculties that can just kind of set work and that normally you know they would set work once a week and kids would work through it at their own pace um whereas my goal usually is to get everybody to the same spot with differentiation, you know? Um, but I think mm. some, some subjects have differentiation built into them by it's about how much work you complete, you know, do you get on to the, to the A level questions or do you only get to the B level questions, you know? Um, whereas, you know, yeah. we've got four or five groups and this one's working at an A level and this one's working at a C level and needs more support. Um, so I guess just the way the faculties work, um, and how that's translated over, um, has created a little bit of, um, uncertainty. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's about flexibility as well. We really, we do have to be mindful that we're a public school and that there might be more, there might be financial or family situations going on there. There might be multiple, multiple siblings trying to use the same computer or the same devices or, um, you know, there's stuff like that that perhaps private schools aren't coming up against as much. Um, yeah. Just just due to um, the demographics, you know, of a public school. It, yeah. We're, private schools are quite fortunate in that the only issue is what are year ones and twos going to do? They've only got iPads. So that is literally the discussion. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, 
Yeah. Oh, no. What do you mean? What are they going to do? They only have iPads. Oh, dear me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, the, the calamity. They haven't got a full operating system. They One and two, what could they do uh, w- with, a, with a full laptop? Oh, gosh. it Look, uh, it makes me very glad that I'm not um, a young teacher and a young mum. That is, I, I feel like I would not be able to homeschool and teach at the same time. So I, my no. heart goes out to everybody that is doing that. And I see all the memes about teaching your kids i see them and i laugh at them yes um and i hope that we get a pay rise out of this (laughs) yeah people are Uh, understanding that we have a a very important part in society right now yes i think i think society as a whole will shift completely especially their attitude towards teachers i think the appreciation um to the amount of work i think no no like no other occupation, you know, are we, are you presented with this kind of situation? You think, right. Okay. So basically zero contact, but we've got to make sure that we have a curriculum to deliver a B C D and we deliver it literally as good, if not better than if we were there in face to face, let's make sure it's happening yesterday yeah. and actually make it happen since yesterday. Like, yeah. And also the amount of results you know, that have the normal stuff, the, the mm. normal stuff of how do you deal with, um, with mental and physical well-being how do you deal with social skills all of the stuff that is is so important to teaching that um that has become 10 times harder to to teach on top of content you know and it's become even more important now that students are perhaps really struggling with with that yes every single time i i've i think in the first week i i was a little bit of a bit obsessed with like, okay, I've got to make sure I'm teaching just as good as I was uh, in the classroom. And I really, t- I really reflected on that first week and I thought, hang on a second, that's not what it's about. And I started just checking in with them, having a little f- conversation, letting them gas bag in, in a sense at yeah. the start of the lesson and just chat and just, you know, they, they're actually so happy to see me. I didn't realize they oh, go, oh, it's Mr. So King. funny, isn't it? Like, have you had any, tell me any fun stories from your Zoom lessons or from students emailing you or work that you've received? Because I've got uh, work that are... stories after stories. I'm just I I'm so love the story. by them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I think I, I chimed into one of my first lessons a little bit. I was running, I was running a minute late and I just walk in and they're just like there, just like, tiktok dancing with a with a background like oh mr k and i said all right cool and it's like walked off screen <laughs> and, like, oh, no. and that was my year 10s my very first zoom it was like they're tiktok dancing and they're like got virtual backgrounds i was like good walks off <laughs> <laughs> i had um i had my year 10s today and mm-hmm. one of our things in my classroom i have a year 10 class of lads of boys that um, perhaps oh, uh, maybe don't uh, want to be there all the time um, and definitely don't want to be doing the kind of high level music two stuff that we are doing in year 10 um, at this point with, you know, very full, we've just done classical music and concertos and now we're moving into romantic music and modern music. And we're going to look at atonalism and all of that. And they're just, you know, it's really hard to sell that to them, but, the things that I have to do in this class just to maintain kind of behavior. Um, one of the things is every time they all walk in the class or kind of 15 of these boys, I have to get them all to take off their hats. And that is um, a battle. And it is, it is, as I say in the classroom, <laughs> it's the hill that I've chosen to die on this year um, is that I don't want them wearing their hats inside because I have this idea that if they take off their hats and sit down, we've kind of set the tone that that I'm in charge and that we're going to do what I've, I've asked them to do this lesson. So right. we get to the Zoom and they all had varying levels of silly um, hats on their heads. Like some of them had obviously <laughs> stolen them from their sisters and there was one with a beret on and one with their normal cap on and they just all were oh, sitting there. God so pleased with themselves that they had their hat on and they're like miss do we have to take our hats off it's like no what you gonna you do can wear your hats in your in your house you can wear your hats in your bedroom it's fine 
And it was just, <laughs> it was so funny because you could That's tell that they had, they had planned that. And, and I don't know, I, I think they were really pleased that I found it funny. And, and I, you know, it's just like, oh, even though you guys are probably my most annoying class, I really miss you. I miss being in the classroom. I miss bantering with my boys, with my lads. Um, yeah, with your boys. And it's, it's just so, it, it was nice. It was a nice way to start the lesson. Um, yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I'm just trying to think now. Uh, my, my, my mind has gone numb, uh, blank for a second. Um, <laughs> I've been getting some great acapella videos. I've been using the acapella app um, with my year sevens because oh, they were good. doing stuff. Um, so I've been getting some fantastic multi kind of tracked videos of students like with a makeshift drum kit in their kitchen that they made out of pots and pans and then sounds that they could find outside. Oh, and, that's really cool. Um, and it's really cool. One kid kind of set up this whole situation in his backyard um, and kind of ran from screen to screen. Oh, it was really, really cool. Um, <laughs> some kind of like high level production stuff, some really creative things happening there. And um, yeah, I mean, deeply entertaining for me. So I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, acapella, acapella is really cool. I guess this whole yeah. virtual orchestra choir is really yeah. taken off. We're, well, we're using gone sound. Back on. Band Hub has gone. Sorry. Gone back up. Do you know about Band Hub? What's Band Hub? So Bandhub was probably the easiest platform to do that sort of stuff on. Um, and last year it got taken down. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, I don't, I don't know why, but the site stopped working. So it's a browser based situation where you can, and it's really built for doing kind of multi-track collaborative online stuff. Um, and I had colleagues, Is it professional for colleagues that vi- used it. Oh, lot. cool. Um, and it's video. Is, and does sound. it have like an it's education all, aspect? Really cool. I don't think it has an education um, aspect at this point. Um, but uh, they basically okay. they took it down last year and they put it back up this month um, because obviously people have been emailing them and saying, "Hey, we really need this right now." Um, so yes, that's you know could be an option. I haven't that's looked huge. into it too much, um, but no. really cool that that software's come back. Um, so yeah, that's... Bandhub is something I'm definitely looking into. Um, that's and my, great colleague used a thing called Flipgrid, I think it was, um, today as well. Um, so she set an assignment for her year 10s and then did it herself. Social it learning. Up. Social learning and uh, collaborative. What is it? Online orchestra and stuff. All of that can be done by our students. So hopefully we'll take advantage of that stuff as a school and not oh, get, cool. not get um, caught up by the department's hatred of chat anything that has a chat feature or anything that has a social feature um because we really need those softwares and the browser-based platforms at the moment yeah that's why i love soundtrap so much um i've been able to sell it really well because it does have that it has that social it has the uh, has the education restrictions like yada 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 which at a private school you know that they're, they're a bit stricter sometimes um and yeah, they're too. a bit more particular about what they want out of a software so it's been a bit harder to sell everything else but soundtrap i showed them how it works and I, I explained the concept that we could use this in our ensembles like our rock bands you know that you can just yeah. get the bass player to lay it down and then the guitarist and then the drum kit or whatever order you want and it feels like you're playing with a band and then everyone freaked out because um my music faculty, there, the demographic there is quite. I'm the youngest one. Like, I'm their kids are my age, basically. Um, yeah. Which, which is hilarious. Uh, anyway, so I'm teaching them all about these programs, which they're none. Most of them had never heard of these concepts before. Um, so I'm just very impressed, actually, with the faculty how they've been able to just learn everything almost the same skill as me within two weeks. It's been really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we had soundtrack- our older members of our faculty saying things like, it feels like I'm a first-year teacher again. Like there's so much stuff that I'm having. These are teachers that are used to walking in. They've been teaching at the same school for 30 years, and they're amazing. Like the teachers that I work with are just of the highest caliber. Um, yes. Fantastic 
teachers, but they're used to walking into a classroom and making it up because they can. Like they have yes. all of the knowledge. They have all of the resources. They're ready to go in their little folders or their printouts and in their head and they can just make it happen. And yes, they're having uh, that is to my department sit as well. down and think, how do I translate that onto the computer, you know, and they're really struggling with that, some of them. Mm. But um, they're being yeah. very uh, good this is where it and yeah, and this is where our role in departments is so crucial is that if oh, yeah. combined, if their experience and their ability just to come up with a bajillion ideas combined with our just sheer knowledge of how technology works, you combine oh, those definitely. together. Like this week and last week, I've been just like sharing every piece of knowledge I know. Everyone's kind of freaked out actually. They, did, they knew I was into tech, but they didn't realize how much I knew about tech. Um, nice. And I'm making tutorial videos here left, right, and center about how to use the program for everybody. And then everyone's saying like, oh, we should do this. And now it's like this super collaborative process, which is awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, well, I feel like we're, we're doing a lot of, you know, uh, one of my colleagues will say, I want to do this thing. How do I do this? Amber, is there something that I could do this on Google Classroom with? And then I'll go, oh, yeah, maybe you should try flat.io or Soundtrap or maybe this app will do it. I'll have a quick look and then I'll create a video tutorial and send it to you. And it's that collaboration yeah. a lot, um, which which is really good. I suppose I am also um, – I'm, I'm missing my faculty, though. I'm missing the – the opportunity to be around my faculty. I'm in a faculty, a large music faculty. Um, yes, I miss our are. staff room, and I miss um, being able to ask all my colleagues for help. And and yeah, I just miss seeing my hod. Just go up to him and say, "Hey, how are you?" Like, "Oh, hey, what's what's he like?" "Oh, I have this idea." And then he go, "Good, oh, good job, Penny." Or like, a, "Oh, I'm not sure about this." He go, "Oh, maybe like just." And just my staff room, just like, you know, good morning, how are you, da 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 da, da and just yeah. just everything. Definitely. It's, Definitely it's, it's very weird. People. It's weird, and it'll be our reality for a while yet, I would say. But um, it's important. 90 days, you're saying. Safe. 90 days, wow. Well, we're two weeks in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Holding <exciting>. strong. Um <laughs> So yeah. Zoom, I'm seeing all these Zoom events pop up on Facebook, which are hilarious. Um, oh, so good. So good. I and like online great. board games. And and yeah. like the other day I had a rehearsal with my with my with the professional choir that I sing in. Um, and Wait, well, how did you do that? Well, uh, we were all on Zoom and someone, we all lined up our YouTube videos of the same recording um, of, <laughs> of the piece that we wanted to do. It was um, a uh, Greater Love Hath No Man, Ireland. Uh, okay. If you're an Anglican chorister, you know that that is a banger of the church mm-hmm. world. Um, right, and we, okay. we all muted our mics and just pressed play and went <laughs> for it. And uh, when the soprano solo came on, um, our organist uh, jumped in uh, and unmuted his mic and gave us a beautiful falsetto uh, soprano solo uh and it was oh, just beautiful it was hilarious and it was chaotic and it was terrible but um it was what we wanted and what we needed you know we everybody yeah. so much I'm lucky to have a few gigs here and there doing um live stream masses at the moment with Christchurch Salon yes. um yesterday yes which, yeah which was um really moving really emotional for me to be back in that space and back um, in my church and singing and knowing that my my colleagues and my choir were were tuning in and were listening and singing along with me and and experiencing that at home and I think that was really important but I still I mean I'm a chorister I've always been a chorister um, through and through you know I've take, I've taken solos here and there and I and I love having a solo but I'm not I'm not a solo singer in terms of wanting a career in solo singing i i love choir i love ensemble work and i miss the community being a part working of together ensemble. yeah it's just there's nothing better for me than singing in a choir it's my favorite thing to do and um yeah and yeah really miss it really miss it yeah going on about what you said how you felt really touched about you know being there you got emotional um mm. that's only after t- i i feel like seeing my students when I go back to school like 
late term two, early term three, I I can't imagine what that would be like just seeing for the first time. Like, I think everyone's going to be completely overwhelmed. Oh, yeah, I think so. And I, I was I was lamenting the fact that um, particularly with my year sevens, because I have so many um, this year, I'm, I teach, team teach three different classes of year seven. Um, so I have 90 yep. students and I'd only just gotten on top of their names when we left. Um, and yes. plus my year seven, <laughs> oh, fire, which is 60 students, um, and also a year seven sport class, which obviously I don't take virtually. Um, so, you know, I'd be all for it, but, um, yeah, I, had so many students to learn and I feel like now I'm 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 really hoping kids aren't slipping through the cracks um really hoping that I'm trying that I'm achieving a relationship with each of them because that's really important for me um so I'll be pleased when we get back into the classroom and I can uh have that ease um of access to them so that I can actually build relationships with them but I think the relationships we're building now are different, but um, are just as important. Yeah. Interesting. It's 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 gonna be so weird. Like yeah, like yeah. you said, like I just started learning my year sevens names, but now I think it's it's almost a little bit easier because uh, to reinforce that because now you see them and like their name is literally underneath. So you go, all right, hi, Olivia, uh, <laughs> student. I've 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 been avoiding using their name because I've been eighty percent sure, but twenty percent doubting myself. So I'm just gonna say, "Hey, you," and then slightly look at your pencil case and go, "Ah, oh, yes, you are Olivia." Um, <laughs> now, yeah. that's true. In term three, we get back. Yeah. So yeah, I had I mean, kids show me their cats in the first lesson. I was like, "No," but now it's like, "Oh, show me your cat." Like oh, I actually obviously. like cat. Pets yeah, because are- like they. I need to see people's pets for my own mental health. I need to see them. Mm. It's it's important for me. <laughs> yeah, pets pets are pets are very good. Birds, <laughs> dogs, not cats. Though. I'm not a cat All person. I think I've told you this. Yeah, I like. I'm not yeah. a cat person particularly, but I do like some cats. You know, I just wouldn't have one myself. I'd yeah, prefer like, to have like a dog. No. Just, just observe yeah. it. Just go. This is a, this is a nice cat. This is something. It's it's a cool yeah. little thing. Cats, cats don't need um, you like dogs do. You know. No. <laughs> and I kind of like that. Like the dogs, like they need you. Like, hi, oh, I'm waiting for. You. Like you know. Yeah. <laughs> I like being depended on. You know. Yes, I get that. I yeah. Get that. Yeah. So in our little list here, uh, for mm. the viewers at home, we've actually organised ourselves. Um, yes. I've organized uh, this. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've attempted in this. Uh, oh, by the way, we are doing this over the internet. So that's why it's a bit. Yes. Um, it sounds like a phone call because it is. Um, so careers as musicians. Shall we talk about that? Yeah. Musicians I mean, going forward. Like, like I said that I, I'm still lucky enough to have one or two occasional gigs singing a live stream mass and I think that'll keep going for a while um yeah but really I mean everything else is has been postponed or cancelled so um you know choir performances and um conducting gigs and and even Anzac Day stuff I had a, a, a couple of Anzac Day sort of stuff things lined up um which is um, an important gig for me every year. I really enjoy doing Anzac Day services. Um, mm. And, yeah, and that stuff has just kind of disappeared. And I'm very lucky that I'm in a teaching job and in a department job and on a contract and I will keep getting paid for that. But all my kind yes. of side hustle gigs, because um, I'm not a full-time teacher, I, I balance this with my professional freelancing career and all that stuff has... Um, yep has gone at this point um and we're having to diversify do more recording do more um online collaborative stuff to try and get content made and try and keep Mm -hmm. um creating opportunities you know it's a bit hard yeah like yeah like you said it's it this year yeah i've been on a full-time contract for for quite a while and i was hoping to cut that down to 0.8 and um 
turns out they, were gonna, they said, oh, would you like 0.9? And I was going to, you know, haggle it down because I want to do exactly what you said, which is, you know, have my freelance career on the side, but that really can't be there to the same degree. So I said, yes, please. Um, to the yeah. 0.9. It's um, like, I'll take that. Um, so I was looking forward to the side hustling gig, you know, restarting yeah. my, re-kickstarting my photography. You probably saw the sudden activity on Instagram. Yes. Um, and then now it's died off because like, well, I think I might start that up again because I have a lot, a lot of excess time now with three yeah. weeks of holidays. Uh, two weeks, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, yes, when you've got your holidays. Um, I, I was thinking, I just, I don't, I feel like I have less free time than I did before at this point as well. Like, yes, yes. I'm just spending it's so much so time weird. lessons and answering emails. I had a student today ask me, Miss, when are our composition marks going to come back? I'm like, when I've done them, like... Like I have no, my free periods are not free periods to mark anymore. They're free periods to plan for the next class, like, and to email people. So it's, it's hard. Yeah, it, to everything in. it is very hard. It is, it is, it's a weird time. I'm not sure how these holidays are going to function. Cause like I do spend time, you know, f- um, just doing nothing at home, but I would, I will go out, you know, at nighttime and see my friends. So it's going to be the same, but night times are going to be quite challenging for me. Um, so I'm going to yeah. have to find things to do and, you know, projects. Lots of Zoom drinks. I'm, I'm planning on doing lots of Soundtrap. Zoom drinks. Uh, I'm going to rediscover video. I often just re- rediscover video games in um, December and yeah. January of every year. And then I put it away for the year. But now I've, you know, dusted off the old Xbox. I'm like, well, I'm going to play with my friend Sunday and we're going to play call of duty we're gonna play pokemon we're gonna play mario kart we're gonna play all these things yeah because that's how well because sunday lives uh a good hour and a half away from me so that's how we communicate and pl- hang out together anyway mm. so now we're gonna just gonna do that now so that's how i'm gonna do, spend my holidays reading i'm gonna finish the lord of the rings nice um, nice uh i've started playing bazooki again you probably saw some videos on instagram yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm going up to the school this week and I I might see if there's any spare uh, woodwind instruments and I might see if I can get back into that. Um, I had a secret, just, yeah, secret just career take one if you can. at one point. So, you know, uh, let's <gasps> see if I can oh, yes. <laughs> or, or choose another woodwind instrument maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, sax is a bit useless. Um Sorry, I but not sorry. Yeah, I mean, in terms of orchestras, I mean, the instrument I was going to choose, which is even more useless, is an instrument called the Vanova, which is um, like a cross. Yamaha makes them. Um, yep. They're a cross between a saxophone and a recorder. And they're like, mm-hmm. these, like they look like a, they look like they're something out of Star Wars. Like they're so odd. <laughs> so there was one sitting around a couple weeks ago. So I might see yeah. still sitting around and take it home and, and have a play. Um, so maybe I will become a, a Vanovaist uh, in mm. my spare time this holidays. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what else can I do. It's just I think I've 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 almost got to the point where I think I'm almost doing too much. So I'm just gonna just see how it goes for a while. And yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone will have to take time to to rest and to deal with. Um, the kind of fallout from changing our lifestyles so dramatically um, and really kind yes. of take time. So I'm glad that the holidays are soon. Um, yeah, and that but also, yeah, yeah, I'm going to use this um, extended isolation to really um, just try, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, not reinvent, inspire. I'm, I'm running out of words here, Amber. Um <laughs> Innovate, innovate. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, just innovate things online regarding the orchestra that we run, the Modesto yeah. Orchestra. Um, just thinking, you know, we're not going to, realistically, we're not going to have our next concert until December. So just thinking, like, how are we going to maintain yeah. our yeah, social how engagement? Gonna how are we going to maintain branding? Like one, one of the things well, uh, I've been hearing a lot about, is, to which is... Tel- oh, I talked over you. This is the internet for us. It's hard. No, nope, you go. You go. This is the internet. The, um, the delay is say, is two seconds. Go. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that um, 
that if anyone's listening and that they are, if they're a modest fan or if they've seen us shared by um, ABC Classic, um, if, if they have any ideas of how they would like to engage with an online orchestra, um, let us know, please. Uh, because yes. Penny and I are actually both involved in this project um, and have been for a couple of years now. Uh, so we would love to hear your ideas about how we can engage with you and maybe engage with uh, your students or with your children if you have um, young musicians in the house. Yeah, I think one of the things we can definitely do is um, just focus on this idea of telling a story. Um, just, just I think content is what people really need what right now because um, you've seen the the post about like oh maths and English and science is so important, but you know in times of isolation, where do you go Ooh. to? Art and music and storytelling, right? Um, yes. And so without yeah. art and music, there is nothing. So I think oh, yeah. one of the things that we could definitely do. Um, is focus on storytelling because what did people used to do, you know, hundreds of years ago, S- sit around a campfire and tell stories. Um, mm. So things like that, um, just yeah. making you know, little bits of content, music related. I don't know. We'll, we'll brainstorm in our next yeah. faculty meeting. Oh, sounds fun. <laughs> sounds fun. Yes. Uh, really, it's just going to be Zoom drinks uh, on a Saturday evening. <laughs> I'll take some minutes. It's fun. It'll be a meeting. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're coming up on an hour now. Um, any final words yeah, you'd like to think... say before we just wrap it up? Um, I think that for anybody that is attempting to teach online, um, to be to be gentle with yourself, and to realize that every bit of frustration and anxiety and uh, and worry that you're feeling, your students are probably also feeling that, but that everybody is doing the best that they can. Everyone that I know, every educator that I know is has doubled down on their efforts and is and is providing excellent, excellent work for their students and are are going above and beyond and that we should just be encouraged that as a community of music teachers whether you're a classroom music teacher or um or a studio music teacher that you you're doing great well done to everyone yeah um and take the holidays well, well rest done and indeed recover, um and let's keep going term two bring it on yes exactly yeah. well well said amber so uh thank you, thank you. Uh, it was really lovely having you on this podcast and I'll definitely have you back for future episodes. Yes, please. And um, I think I haven't thought of a way to end any podcast other than just awkwardly saying bye. Um, okay. Can you think of, an, uh, of any way of signing off? I think you need a song. I don't, I don't have an instrument near me. <laughs> um, oh, um, I have my automaton. Yes. Mine's run out of batteries. Get, oh, I should, get should I get my automaton? All right, I'll get my automaton. Okay, yes. I'll wheel over to it. <laughs> All right, so I've got my automaton. Uh, what, what do I play on my automaton? I think we need um, <laughs> probably a descending situation, you know, because, you know, you have it ascending when you come into 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 a situation and then you need a descending little melodic. Right, okay, that's, uh, that's really clever. Um, yeah. What about the ending to the promenade? Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, okay, so yep. I put, put up the octave and up the octave. Oh, was there a microphone squeak? There definitely was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I think that, that's um, the best ending to any podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> um, there's more to come. Uh, I'll do some automaton um, covers. How's that sound? Good. Yes, we need that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Amber. All right. I'll say bye you, now. Annie. Bye. Bye.